In this lecture, let's understand some of the concepts which we learned in our previous lecture practically. This lecture is the continuation of my previous lecture. So if you have not watched the previous lecture, then I will highly recommend you to watch that lecture first, where I have cleared the concept of how the requested response works and how the web actually works in general. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at HTTP request and HTTP response and what informations it contains. So this is the node application which we have created so far. So in the address bar, when I type the local IP address, which is 127.0.0.1 colon, the port number where we are listening to the request, it is showing us this response, this text response. So from our node application, we are sending this response whenever a new request hits this IP address and this port number. So if I go back to the browser and if I open developers tool, and if I go to this network tab, let me clear everything here and let's make a new request. So I will reload the page. So a new request has been sent. And here we can see that request. So the request was sent on this IP address. Status code is 200. That means the request was successful. And if I double click on this request, you can see the information related to that request. So let me first retract these. And let's see each of these informations one by one. So basically for this URL, we can see the general information. We can see the response headers and we can see the request headers. If I expand this general information here, you can see the request URL. So the URL to which we made the request, then you can also see the request method. So here we made a get request. So the request method here is get. And then we can also see the status code. So since the request was successful, the status code is 200, which is okay. Now, as we learned with every request, we can also send some headers. So let's take a look at request headers here. In the request header, you can see this accept verb. So basically it tells what kind of response this client is able to accept. You can see the encoding, the language, basically the browser's language. So it is English US. You can see the host here. Okay, so all these informations we send to the server with the request using the request header. Then when we receive the response, that response also has some headers. Let's expand this response header here. Now here we are only seeing this much of response header. That's because in the last lecture, if you remember, we learned that as a backend developer, we are the one who creates the request. So we are the one who sets the response headers, the body for the response and other informations. Now, if you want to see the response which we have received for this client from the server, you can go to this response tab and you can see here we are receiving a text response. Now, if we want, we can also return an HTML response. So here, instead of returning a text response, let's say I want to send some HTML response. So basically, I want to send an H1 element in the response. And here I will say this is home page. Okay. Let me stop the server for now by pressing Control C. Let me save the changes here and let's start the server again. So for that, let's run this app.js file. So the server has started. Let's go back to our browser. Let's refresh the page. And now you can see we are receiving some HTML response. If I again open this request, you will see that now we are receiving the HTML response. Okay. And again, you can see the headers here. And using this developer tool, you can also preview the response. So here we are receiving this H1 element in the response. If I preview it, it will be shown like H1 element. All right. Now let's understand one more thing. So I'll go back to VS code. And what I will do is here, I will create a new folder inside this Node.js basics folder. I'm going to create a new folder. I will call it maybe template. And inside this template, I'm going to have some HTML files. So let me go ahead and let me create an index.html file. Okay, inside this index.html, I'm going to write some HTML. And here, let me add an H3 element in this body of the HTML and also one paragraph element. Okay, let's save the changes. And now what I want is, I want to send this HTML as the response whenever a new request hits this server. For that, what I'm going to do is, we are already importing this FS module here. So, I'm going to read this index.html file using that fs module. So here, let's say fs dot 
read file sync and here i'm going to use this read file sync method because i want to read the file synchronously and once we have the data then only we want to proceed with this code here let's specify the path of the file which we want to read in the current directory we have this template folder and inside that template folder we have index.html then we also need to specify the encoding which is utf8 and this read file sync is going to return the content of the index.html file let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable and let's call it simply html okay and let's send this html as the response whenever a new request hits the server all right let's save the changes let's go to the web page before that let me first stop the server and start the server again okay so the server has started let's go back to the web page let me close this developer tool and let's refresh the page and now you can see we have an s3 element and the paragraph element so now what we are doing is we are reading this index.html file we are reading the html content of this file and we are returning it as the response so if i go to the web page and if i open the developer tool again if i go to this network tab let me make the request again and let's open this request and if i go to the response tab here you will see that we are receiving that html in the response now let me make the request one more time and if you notice when we are making the request we can see two requests made here the first request was made to favicon.ico and the second request was made to the url which we are typing here so this is the default behavior of browser whenever we make a new request browser first makes a request to the favicon and then it makes the request to the url which we have entered in the address bar and we only see these two requests because currently our html which we are returning as a response it is not using any other resource but let's say in the template file let me go ahead and let me create a new folder i will call it maybe styles and inside this styles folder i'm going to create a new file i will call it style.css okay inside this style.css let's add some css style so here let's set the style for h3 element and let's also set some style for paragraph okay now let's go ahead and let's use this style.css in our index.html file so here after this title let's use this link tag and there let's set the href style slash style.css and let's set this rel to style sheet with this let's save the changes let's stop the server by pressing ctrl c and let's start the server again and let's go to the web page and now if you notice when i reload the page there are three requests made the first request is made to this url the url which we have typed here and also to this fav icon and then a new request has also been made to this style.css now why is that that's because in the last lecture if you remember we learned that when we are receiving the html response if that html is using any other resource like css file or javascript file or images or any other assets then the browser will make a request to download those assets and then it will use it and it will render it if i go ahead and if i add one more asset here so inside this template folder let me create one more folder i will call it scripts and inside this scripts folder i'm going to place some javascript files so let me call it at script.js and inside the script.js let's write a simple javascript function this alert function and here let's say welcome to node app okay let's go ahead and let's use this script.js file in our html file so after this body tag i will use this script tag and here to the script tag let's specify the source folder and to that let's assign script slash script.js okay let's save the changes let's stop the server by pressing ctrl c and let's start the server again let's go back to the web page and let me reload the page and now you will see that now we can see that four requests are made the first request was made by us because we typed the url and pressed enter so that time the request was sent to this url then this url is going to send us an html response and in that html response we are using style.css and script.js file so the browser also made a request to download those style.css and script.js file from the server and if you notice 
the initiator of this style.css and the script.js is this index basically the index.html it is the one which is requesting for this style.css file and this script.js file i hope this is clear now so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day